Compost tea is just about the best thing you could feed your plants. The low-tech version is a five-gallon bucket. Add compost and stir occasionally. That works. In a few hours, you have a powerful plant. Add an aquarium pump, and it aerates the water and drives off most of the chlorine. It's all good. The next level is all about the flow, making a better environment for your microorganisms to flourish. I chose this wide-body design because I wanted the the flow to be more like a pond than a toilet. I wanted a flat bottom to collect the heavy stuff. So I started with a 25 gallon utility tub from my local feed store. It cost me 30 bucks. I cut a hole in the bottom and installed a two inch shower drain. I sealed it with aquarium sealant. I built that stand out of stuff we had laying around the yard. The tubes are all one and a half inch PVC from the local hardware store. This manifold distributes the water from the drain to the vertical tubes. And these tubes are what makes it go. With the air pump we inject air at the bottom of the tubes and the bubbles push the water out the top into the tub. We direct the elbows in the direction of the flow and in less than a minute the vortex starts to form. We started with a pump rated at 45 liters per minute. That worked fine with only water, but just adding compost and nutrients would slow it down and the vortex would get smaller. So like most of the other folks building these things, we got a bigger pump, 110 liters per minute. It nearly doubled the size of the vortex and it keeps the flow going much better when the tea thickens. I used flex couplings and clean out plugs so I could clean these tubes when needed. The unit breaks down for cleaning with everything but the tub itself washable in a five gallon bucket. I set it up with the tub as a sort of sink and a good pressure hose and it washes pretty easy. On a purely practical level, you can't beat this Vortex Brewer compared to the five gallon bucket we used last year. This configuration provides constant flow with no dead spots. The airlift powers the flow without moving parts to gum up, and the vertical tubes provide a confined space to maximize aeration and gas transfer. Okay, the apparatus is functional. So now to test some recipes. First I tried mesh bags with super sifted compost, like a tea bag. Then I just put compost right in the brewer and filtered it out with, with these mesh bags. It all worked. What worked worked best, and was the least amount of work, was to put three cups of sifted compost in a five gallon bucket with an air pump overnight. The vigorous action gets the bacteria into the solution, separate from the floaters and sinkers. So after shutting it down, letting it settle for 10 minutes, skim off the floaters with a piece of screen, then pour that muddy mixture into the brewer, being careful not to disturb the heavy stuff that has settled to the bottom of the bucket. Then I add a tablespoon of molasses dissolved in some water and two tablespoons of liquid kelp. There it is. I run that until I get a good foam dome. There are lots of variables. It can take anywhere from a few hours to a few days to get a really good dome. You can see the difference between the muddy intake bucket on the right and the clear rusty color of the finished brew. Your nose knows. If it smells sweet and earthy, great. Feed it to your vegetables. When it starts to stink, give it to the trees and roses. It's true, some plants like it better than others. Okay, one method is to run the brewer once a week until you get the food, the good foam dome, and use it all at once, break it down and clean it. I've also tried drawing three gallons and topping off with more compost every day. I kept it running this way for better than six weeks. By then the sludge buildup was substantial, but for me cleaning once every six weeks was better than <laughs> once a week. I couldn't tell any difference as far as the uh, way the plants liked. They liked 
off. From a more philosophical viewpoint, the flow pattern created by this apparatus is said to be one of the most fundamental in nature. The torus with the vortex through the axis duplicates the lines of flux in a magnetic field. This is the shape of the flow of galaxies and atoms, tornadoes and hurricanes. It's the shape it of the magnetic field surrounding the Earth and the human body. It could be said to be the shape of the universe. You may have encountered some research showing that water is liquid crystal that has memory capabilities. If you followed my blog at all, you know I see life as a process of gathering, storing, evaluating, and updating information about itself. And water is one of the main carriers of information within living systems. So, we allow this liquid crystal memory stuff to organize itself into this universal flow pattern. Then we fill the flow pattern with living organisms, lots of oxygen, and some food for them to eat. And then we have a colony of organisms fundamental to the web of life, growing in a friendly environment, doing what they do best, preparing nutrition for the plants that feed us. Now, if you've followed the research on how thought can change the structure of water and affect the growth of plants, you might see where I'm going with this. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. 